Let's take a look at our tail of the tape, Miguel, in our opening matchup of this Super Bantamweight Clash. The youth and the reach by Roman against Payano. Has Payano taken too much punishment? He's had, from what's reported, from anywhere between 446 to 528 amateur fights. No one knows the number, <laughs> but he's had a lot of rounds. Here's Special Jimmy attraction Jimmy. in this boxing extravaganza, a super bantamweight world title eliminator. Now making his way to the ring, fighting out of Miami by way of the Dominican Republic, the former world champion, Juan Carlos Payano. And here is, here is Juan Carlos Payano trained under the guidance of Herman Caicedo. Caicedo is, I think, one of the most underrated trainers in all of boxing. He became an American citizen last November. He's been living in Miami since 2010 in housing, connected to his trainers, Jim, along with eight other fighters. Two-time Olympian in 2004, 2008. Only world titleist from the Dominican Republic right now is Jason Rosario. And you pointed out with Payano that he has over 400 amateur fights. And for him, he's going off of the longest layoff of his professional career, 14 months due to COVID-19. For Payano, 16 of his 24 fights have been here in the United States. And now joining us to the blue opponent. corner, fighting out of Los Angeles, here is the former 122 pound unified champion of the world, Danny, the baby-faced assassin, Roman. And here is Danny Roman making his PBC debut former unified champion in the super bantamweight division. Danny Roman loves to throw tons of punches and he gives his absolute best every single time. He was actually promoted by Thompson Boxing under the guidance of Alex Campanova, outstanding matchmaker. In his first four fights, he went two and two when he started his pro career. Then they released him from his promotional contract. Seven fights later, they reunited with him. He said he got rid of his girlfriend because she was too much of a distraction and he wanted to focus strictly on boxing. He said, my lifelong girlfriend is the sport of boxing and it served him well, Miguel. It certainly did, Ray. What a decision it made him. It made him a unified champ. And uh, now he's looking to get back to that mountaintop again. As you take a look at the tail of the tape again, I said the reach it favors Roman, the youth favors Roman. We don't know how much, you know, this comes a point in a boxer's life where uh, it just becomes too much. You have too many hard rounds, too many fights, and we're wondering, is that where Pyro is in, that point, in his point of his career? Getting ready to begin the night in the second card. We take a look at the rules. No three knocked out row, no standing eight count. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight by this official after four rounds have been completed. And now let's send it up to our ring announcer. Here is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mohegan Sun Arena here in Uncasville, Connecticut, Premier Boxing Champions continues with our tremendous night of action. Brought to you by Lions Only Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. Sponsored by proper number 12 Irish Whiskey, the finest, the tastiest, the smoothest liquid gold in the world. This bound in the ring is presented in association with Thompson Boxing and is sanctioned by the WBC, the President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor Michael George. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside, from Rockville Center, New York, Kevin Morgan, from Owasso, Oklahoma, David Sutherland, and from Noank, Connecticut, Don Torella. Presenting a third man to the ring, our referee in charge of the action, Johnny Callis. All right, fans, here we go. A battle of world rank contenders for the WBC Super Bantamweight World Title Eliminator, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Presenting first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with gold trim. He fights out of Miami, Florida, by way of La Vega in the Dominican Republic. 
He weighed in at 121 and one half pounds. His record, 21 wins, three losses, nine wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the crafty Southpaw and former WBA Bantamweight champion of the world, Juan Carlos Payano. His opponent across the ring is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with silver trim. He hails from Los Angeles, California. He weighed in at a ready 121 and one quarter pounds. His record, 26 wins, three losses and one draw, with 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the WBC number three contender. Here is the former unified 122 pound champion of the world, introducing the baby faced assassin, Danny Roman. Once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Johnny Callis. Ayano, Danny, you received your instructions in the dressing room. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Above all, obey my commands at all times. First command is right now. Touch gloves and the bell rings box. Good luck. So we begin the second half with a dynamite super bantamweight eliminator between Daniel Roman and Juan Carlos Payano. Again, I'm glad we had a little bit of a break because now we need all that energy for this particular matchup. We certainly do, Ray. Both of these guys have been former champions. Well, this is a good test both for Roman and Payano. You know, what's interesting is Herman Caicedo, instead of Payano going up the way, Caicedo says he thinks Payano can go down to 115, which is the complete opposite of what Payano has done. Won a world title at 118 and now fighting here at 122. Yeah, this, this weight class is stacked. Like we were saying, it was a good uppercut by Payano. Um, being 36 years old, can he compete with a lot of these guys that are still in the thick of their prime? We're going to find out. Well, I've seen great moments for Payano when he won the world title down in Florida in 2015, in August of 2015, when he defeated Rasheed Warren and became a world champion. I've also, I was in Japan when he got knocked out by Naoya Inoue in the first round, and nothing wrong against that, but I have seen the highest of highs for Payano and the lowest of lows in his career. We'll see what tonight brings against Daniel Roman. Roman, I mean, looking at his last eight fights, the combined record of his opponents, 134, 2, and 3. That just shows the level of competition Roman's been up against. And Roman never shies away from fighting top level competition. This is a guy that just constantly works hard, gives his best day in, day out, and he brings his hard hat when he punches in his time clock. As we see with Roman, he, he will switch stances. He's not just he's ambidextrous, so he can go back and forth. He started off softball, now he's to conventional, trying to get Payano a different look. I know in speaking with Herman Caicedo that he had the whole gym pretty much on lockdown and everyone lived there. He said that he himself even lived at the gym with his fighters because he wanted to make sure that they had the proper attention necessary. One, of the, one thing about these guys, they throw punches and bunches. They're high volume punchers. As we saw with Roman in his loss, his last loss to Akmedli, I guess. That's not, yeah, that's easier not to say. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he threw 150 punches in that fight, or landed 150 punches in that fight, compared to 153. So these guys, they throw a lot. And Roman is one of those. Good right hook by Payano as Roman came forward. He set it up with the left uppercut. What's interesting about, you know, you look at Daniel Roman, he's wearing the Reyes gloves. Those are puncher's gloves, wearing Grant gloves. Is Payano, Grant gloves are more accustomed to protecting the hands of fighters. That ends the first. Go and listen to the corner of Daniel Roman. Hey, listen. Be careful. 
Pero bien bonito, bien bonito. Un poquito más pinté y no dejes que él te trabaje más, ¿no? Dos a uno, por lo menos de tu parte. Coming up on round two, this one is scheduled for 12. It is an eliminator fight. We will stay within the Super Bantamweight division in our next matchup with Luis Netti and Aaron Alameda. And uh, Juan Carlos Payano, the southpaw. First round was a feeling out process began between these two. Yeah, it really was. Both of these guys, not really big knockout punchers. Only 10 knockouts for Roman in 30 fights. Payano with nine knockouts in 24 fights. So they're not, they're more high volume, just not a lot of power behind those punches. Well, they don't have that one punch eraser, but over the course of the fight, they can go ahead and do some damage on your face and bust you up, but do they have that concussive knockout power? The answer is no, but they do bring exciting fights, which is why this is such a compelling matchup to begin the second portion of this card. And again, this is boxing. Anyone can be knocked out at any given time, so. Um, we've seen some wild things that have happened. Payano looking to land that straight left. Roman crowding him. Roman remaining active. That's one of his better traits is the fact that he's always busy. He's not one of those slow starters. The fight. He starts right away. He puts pressures on his opponent. And Payano, I mean, he welcomes that sometimes, too. He's, he's not afraid of a, of a fight. He's been in a couple of wars himself. But Payano can't just have a lot of feints, and he's got to be able to start to land some significant punches, at least over the next few rounds, in order to gain the respect of Daniel Roman. Roman is doing a good job of moving forward and having Payano on his back foot. And if you're Roman, your aggression is going to be one of your best assets, but he has to have a controlled aggression against Payano because of how unorthodox Payano is. Yep, Payano is unorthodox. He is very aggressive, Roman. He's also aggressive, but it does Calculated actually, aggression. Exactly, he's a great counter puncher. Who wins that battle? Close distance now, Johnny Callis will step between these two. So far it seems like a chess match to start with. It's a high level chess match, nice right hook by Payano that caught the attention of Daniel Roman. And now, final moments of this second round between Roman and Payano. Take a look at the action from the second. Thank you. Right here we see a little bit of a flurry from Roman. He was able to hit Payano a little bit on the back of the head. Bring up the upper. Measure him on the corner. Set him up there. Set him up. Set him up. And release your right hand straight down the middle. Okay? Do not, do not give the pace of the fight. You have to match, you have to push that pace, okay? At your pace, not his pace. Take the distance away. Take the distance away from him every time you finish. Step over to the right, really side of him. 
here, here's Trainer Eddie Gonzalez. Tell him, Ray, you know, you got to take his distance away. Cut off the ring and use that uppercut. Because it's there. I mean, Pion has a very wide stance. You can see right through the defense. His defense isn't all that great. So there's opportunity there for Roman. Well, at 36 years of age as well, Payano has to be thinking, I need this victory in order to once again get a world title shot because at 36, I mean, you're getting into your, even into your 30s at this lighter weight. That's considered old. When you're in mid-30s, you're considered almost virtually ancient in terms of boxing terms. Payano has been that anomaly. Oh, yeah, he certainly has. Typically in these lighter weight classes, you get a lot of young, energetic fighters, <laughs> very talented. And early 20s, <laughs> yeah, yeah. guys that are early mid 20s. I mean, look at Brandon Figueroa, he's 23 years of age. Angelo Leo, who's 25. Typically, you don't see guys that are 36 fighting at this high a level when it comes to the lighter weight classes. No, you don't. And I was looking to prove be that anomaly in this 122 pound division and come up with the upset overall. I believe there's a cut on the forehead on Juan Carlos Payano. Yeah, a cut on the forehead. I wonder if that was because of a clash of heads. We'll take a look at that in between rounds as we come up on the midway point of the third round. We appreciate you joining us wherever you are around the world. Nice left hook followed by a right cross from Daniel Roman. A headbutt. Or a punch, but uh, the platform again, Roman just stays busy. He's always looking for his shots. Again, cornering Piano. Keep him up, Danny. Keep him up. There's a straight left by Juan Carlos Piano. One, one thing that Piano has is he just loads back on that left uppercut. He'll throw it a couple of times each round. He really puts all his force into that left uppercut. Roman's been able to avoid it a couple of times, but it's still. Roman cutting off the ring. There's a left hook by Daniel Roman. Jab right to the midsection by Juan Carlos Payano. Body shot by Payano on Roman. Payano's starting to pick up his body work. There's, look at that work rate by Juan Carlos Payano. A couple right hooks followed by a left to the body. Payano starting to pick up the pace here. He was known as Baby Pacquiao because he grew up loving Manny Pacquiao. Nice right hook. He's letting his hands go. Roman retreating backwards for the first time here in the fight, largely in part to the work of Juan Carlos Payano. And this and action is intensified. Juan Carlos Payano having the best round thus far. Johnny Dallas says it is a headbutt. And there was that vicious left uppercut from Juan Carlos Payano. A very pinpoint accuracy from the 36-year-old from the Dominican Republic. Keep moving and keep doing your work. <laughs> Coach is calling that an unintentional head. Thank you, sir. Let's take a look at the last five fights for Juan Carlos Payano. And that is not the last five fights for Payano. He did not fight Austin yeah, Trump. That would be to a it, significant oh, mismatch, but we will go yeah, ahead and once again, head, guys. we will Natural, bring that right? to you a little bit later on. Didn't know Austin Trout dropped 30 pounds. I would be stunned if that was the case, and I know Austin. I was like, wait a minute. But what I do know is we're in the fourth round. This one is scheduled for 12 between Juan Carlos Payano and Daniel Roman. Roman looked a little bit flustered by the combinations that Payano started throwing at him in the third round. Okay. I think he was just surprised at how much energy Payano has to start this fight off. Just the, the number of punches that he was throwing and the connect rate that he was having. So I think Roman will be better prepared in this round, but I think it took him a little bit off guard. Wasn't expecting that from Payano. And if you're Payano, you could 
keep doing what he was doing. I mean, that was a, that was a fantastic round in that third round. So, obviously, it's going to be hard to keep up that volume, but if he can continue to keep the pressure on Roman and really come at him from different angles like he was doing in that third round, he can really catch Roman off guard. Well, for Roman, you wonder how much that fight against Akhmedliev in January took out of him. I mean, Payano has been off for quite some time. Roman, though, fought at the beginning of the year, but you wonder what that did to the mental psyche and also physically to Roman. It has been about eight months or, yeah, eight months since that fight. So you wonder, has Roman recovered? How is he feeling mentally? Because, you know, some guys, it takes them a little while to recover after losing your championships. Yeah, it's definitely not easy, especially, like you said, the war that he was in. You know, he had 153 punches landed on him. So that will take its toll on anyone, and that was just in January. Sometimes, like you said, when you talked about Derevianchenko. Took him about 11 months, almost a year, to recover from that fight with Golovkin. Exactly. Some, some fighters, it, it is warranted to take off a year. Under a minute to go here in this fourth round between Daniel Roman and Juan Carlos Payano. And then if you look at it from Payano's standpoint, you're like, you, you come out with a little bit extra fire in your belly when you know that this may be one of the last opportunities you get at a world title shot. Well, I think you have to have the gambler's mentality and you have to be a little bit more willing to throw caution to the wind. And we're starting to see that in this in the early part of the fight. We're only a third of the way through, pretty much. And I see Payano more active here in this fourth round. So he realizes he can't get down early. But Roman steadfast. Some good body work there momentarily by Roman. Final moments of the fourth. Let's take a look in the third round as we look at this right hook that missed. And I believe this is the clash of heads, if I'm correct, yes. Oh. Looks like they have that cut in the middle of the forehead taken care of again of Juan Carlos Payano due to the clash of heads. It didn't have any effect in the last round. Here's now the point of the fight where you got to start to put, exert your will on Payano. He came out, he did what he was supposed to do, more energy, more, really was able to connect and started off well on his end. If you're Roman, you got to answer back, counter. He's got to jab his way on the inside as well. He can't just wait for that one home run shot because number one, he's not a knockout puncher. Neither one of them are. But Payano is the one coming forward, throwing the jab, letting his hands go, and then he darts in and out. And Roman is having a hard time of gauging the rhythm and the timing of Juan Carlos Payano. Yep, and right now, Roman's just pretty much stationary. While Payano, like you said, is coming in and out consistently. Good work by Payano. Here is Roman inside work by the man known as the babyface assassin. And here's some good body work by Roman. And if I'm Roman, I need to target more of the body because the way that you take away the mobility of someone who is as elusive and unorthodox like Payano is to take away his legs. And how do you do that? By ripping the body. Yep. And that's what will slow him up. And Roman, I think, is starting to understand that here as he's going to the body a lot more. Look for that to take effect in the later rounds. Double jab by Juan Carlos Payano.
Payano continues to do a very nice job and just coming from a lot of different angles. And he's throwing punches from just weird angles. I mean, he's always done that. It all depends on the kind of the level of opposition that he's done it against. He couldn't do that well against Inoue because Inoue had turned out his lights. But he had success in the first fight against Rasheed Ward. This guy makes it rather difficult. He actually got finished off by Luis Neri as well, did Juan Carlos Payano. But against guys who don't have much pop, he's been able to get away with it. And Roman is another guy that, from a number standpoint, he doesn't even have half of his wins by knockout. So he has an under 50% knockout percentage. Yeah, and that could, that could favor Payano because, like you said, it will allow Payano to come from those underdog angles, leave himself open sometimes. He's willing to take unnecessary risks because he he understands that Roman can crack him, but he's not afraid of that one-punch knockout devastation. Right here, Roman tagging the body. That's where Roman needs to live. He needs to continue to keep pressure on Payano and go and dig into the body. Oh, Luis Neri is watching this intently in the dressing room as he gets ready for his next outing. And Jermel Charlo has made his way into the arena here in Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. Here in Uncasville, Connecticut, as Jermel Charlo getting ready for his unification matchup against Jason Rosario. His title earlier tonight. Here's Jason Rosario, a proud representative. For Juan Carlos Payano, here we go as we look at Juan Carlos Payano, his last five fights. The knockout loss stands at Luis Neri. That was on the undercard of Pacquiao and Thurman in Las Vegas. A unanimous decision victory over Damian Vasquez. The loss at the hands of Naoya Inoue two years ago in Japan. And victories over Mike Plania and Alexis Santiago. Those are not two losses to Ronald Conner, right? When you talk about Inoue and then obviously Luis Neri. Two of arguably some of the hardest punchers in the lighter weight classes that we have. On to round six we go. Ray Flores, Miguel Flores is here. Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino for this big night of boxing. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are around the world. We sincerely appreciate you inviting us into your homes for this terrific night of boxing. And now Roman getting off a little bit more and earlier in the round, but blood streaming from the nose of Payano. Now Roman, he went from southpaw back to conventional. Many times he does this. And that, that you hear Roman's corner letting him know, walk him down, keep him walking him down. And you, you saw this to start this round, Roman did that and had some success. He's got to continue to do that. Keep this tight and roll with a punch. Not the Romans utilizing the jab enough either. Well, that's the thing is that I know you're a counter puncher in Roman, but he needs to jab his way on the inside. And Payano is picking him apart in the distance. This tempo favors Payano and the distance because Payano is out of the way from being you know, landed upon. When he dark, he comes in, he throws punches, and then he backs up, and Roman has to chase him. There's a straight left backing up Roman. Just over the halfway mark of the sixth. There you see Roman. Digging into the body, he's got to cut Payano, cut the ring off from Payano because Payano, again, he comes from different angles, but then he's able to maneuver out of the way of Roman. It's almost like Roman's feet are stuck in quicksand at points as Payano's on his toes, bobbing in and out, using good head movements, and Roman sometimes, I think, gets kind of caught flat-footed, and he gets tagged. Good body work followed by a straight left from Payano. I just wonder when is there going to be a point in this fight where Payano is going to slow down because he's kept up this, this high pace virtually all night or six rounds in. 
Look, I'll tell you this, I know that he has a snack nutrition on his trunks, and that is a supplementation company led by Victor Conti. So even at 36, I wish I looked at that like that when I was 26. Paitano, I don't think, has an ounce of fat on him. 122-pound contest between former unified champions Halfway through of the Super Bantamweight title eliminator. Let's take a look at Danny Roman, his last five fights. The loss that we heard about to Akhmedliev. The victory over TJ Doheny, that was an absolute war in Los Angeles. The victory over Gavin McDonald, the victory over Moises Chucky Flores, no relation to us whatsoever. That was down in Dallas. And then the win over Ryoto Matsudomo in Japan. Also some notable guys at 122, Rai Salim, Carlos Castro, Isaac Dogbe, Stephen Fulton Jr., Ryosuke Iwasa, Luis Neri, and Daniel Roman as well, and Osvat Hovnasian as well. So quite a bit of talent at 122. It is great to be here bringing you this tremendous night of boxing onto the second portion of what has been a dynamic card. Juan Carlos Payano and uh, Daniel Roman matching up. When Roman became a free agent, and yet I was thinking, I was like, man, I would love to see Roman in the mix when it comes to Premier Boxing Champions at 122. Well, that is exactly what happened. Like we said, Ray, the 122-pound division is loaded, especially when you can factor in the Premier Boxing Champions 122-pound stable, and now you throw Roman into the mix. Uh, just another big so contender have, uh, and former champion. Talents of uh, one Carlos Mayano, but let's see how our unofficial scorer, Steve Ford, has it at the uh, halfway point. Mo, I think this is going to be very close fight and a lot of very close rounds. I think as Payano's looking solid, Miguel, but Roman, you know, we saw him win a few rounds as well. I think this is a very close fight. Payano, I know we've been mentioning Payano, but Roman has remained disciplined and patient as well as he rips the body of Payano. There's Payano again, just with the other punch, just... A nice right that got underneath the left elbow of Payano. And then every time Payano was moving, he's also throwing at the same time. So when he's trying to get out the weight, he's throwing up two or three punches while he's repositioning himself. Well, I think it's fair to say that neither man, for the most part, truly sets their feet to get proper leverage behind their shots, but it has worked for them to get them to this particular point, both men former world champions. Payano spins around Roman. Not a right hand by Roman. It just looks like Roman just a step slow to Payano. Like you said, Ray, it's a tight fight, but there's just certain exchanges between Payano and Roman. Roman just looks like he's just one half step behind. Now Roman was looking to cut off the ring, and then he allowed Payano to get off the ropes. So I thought he was going to press it, but instead Payano moved to his right and spun around essentially and got back to the center of the ring. And right there, I think in those two instances, we saw one of the more put on the ropes. I think Roman is just giving away the real estate too easily. You know, for him, use your positioning, corner him a bit more because the some of the successive points we've seen in this fight for Roman are when he's able to get by against the ropes and dig into the body. Final stages of our seventh stanza. Right? Ah, good. Okay. Right? Right? 
Take a look at some of this action, Miguel, as man, oh man, were they engaged in a close distance. An overhand right, Ramon bent himself over. <laughs> as you see with Payano, he's not even, he's like falling down <laughs> along the ropes and he's still throwing punches. He has, his feet aren't set, not putting anything really into the punches, but he's just throwing. So this is we begin. Well, for wow. Danny Roman, he won the WBA title in September of 2017, added to the IBF to in 2019. Roman has faced southpaws in his last two and three of his last six. So dealing with southpaws is something that is not foreign to Daniel Roman. There's a nice straight left to the body by Juan Carlos Payano from the Dominican Republic. And the Dominican Republic will be center stage in our main event with Jason Rosario, the WBA and the IBF Super Welterweight Champion against Jermel Charlo. And that was a good exchange by Juan Payano. Juan was coming forward and throwing the long punches. And Payano backed him up. And he got a shot to the body and then went over the top. Payano now walking down. Roman, a couple of straight lefts. Scorching shots and now attacks the body. A nice right hook by Payano. Look at Payano go. He is swinging for the fences. Oh, a straight left that caught Roman. It might have buckled his knees. Payano is fighting an incredible fight right now. Payano unloaded a straight left that buckled the knees of Roman for a brief second. Roman's got a heck of a chin as we all knew that coming into this fight. But my goodness. One thing that's helping Tejano is he really digs into the body of Roman when he's coming forward. And then follows it up, going upstairs. But digging into the body, that really forces Roman to stop coming forward. And he's got to almost cover up because of the body shots from Tejano. Oh, oh, and then it leaves his face exposed because he has to bring his elbows tight to his body. Payano continues to fight at this feverish pace again. You mentioned a few rounds ago, if they could maintain this pace, could Payano keep it up? Well, so far through eight, the answer is unequivocally yes. And he's been doing a tremendous job. His cardio's been on point. And again, I think the body shot, Piano's not throwing a lot of body shots, but when he's throwing them, he's, like I said, he's digging in a Ramon. And I think that's really hurting a lot. You can almost see him wincing a couple of times when he digs into the body as Ramon next on a beautiful left counter. Well, that certainly caught the attention of Piano. As we near the end of the eighth, this has been a fun matchup again between Payano and Roman. It is everything we anticipated as we head towards the ninth. Thank you. Esa respiración controla eso. Es una vuelta de segundo de eso. Let's take a look at some of the action from the eighth. We get look at this left by Payano, but not to be deterred is Daniel Roman. Right here is a straight left from Payano. 
hitting Roman on the forehead. Then again, just dark dodges right out of the counter shot from Roman. Paranos just fighting a beautiful fight. Again, it's a tight contest right now, but Paranos has given himself a shot in these later rounds to win this. And who would have thought that Payano, by looking at him and witnessing how well he's fighting, that he's 36 years of age here and competing at 122. This is a good exchange from Roman. Roman's really got to, over the course of the last four rounds, he's got to dictate the use of this. He's a lot by now, but land the better of the exchanges, land the more power shots. There's a nice right hand, a laser right hand from Roman. Roman picking up the pace, and we'll see if he can close the distance and start to impose his will. Right, don't punch, step back. Make sure you turn your torso when you step back. Wow, Ayano the headhunter tonight. Good job again. Coming up on 100 seconds to go in this ninth round. But Oman advancing forward. There's a right to the body by Oman. They're wrestling. Johnny Callis will step between the two. I don't need this guy. I don't need the guy in the center of the ring. I need him in the ropes in the corners. Right There's a right hook upstairs by Payano, a left on the abdomen of Roman. Let's get up and cover Roman, followed up with a right hook. Under a minute left here in the ninth. If you're Payano, you don't want to get too careless. You fought a good fight so far. You don't want to give Roman that window. It's starting to see, though, that Payano's pulling ahead in my estimation, Miguel, because with what he is doing from an accuracy standpoint, along with dictating the pace and the tempo, I think it is benefiting him greatly. It certainly is, Ray. And, you know, we don't have the copy box numbers in front of us, um, but just by just looking at it, it looks like Payano has controlled this fight. He's landed the bigger shots. He's gotten the better of the exchanges for the most part. And Roman, you know, it hasn't been a dominating victory so far for Payano, but it looks like if I had to lean one way over the other, it would be Payano or Roman. Well, I think Payano is starting to gain a lead against Daniel Roman. That ends the round. Our co-main event. We'll still be here in the super bantamweight division, but the power punching knockout artist is Luis Neri, trained now by Eddie Reynoso, one of the best trainers in all of boxing. The man known as Pantera. In English, it is the Panther. He will square off against Aaron Alameda. An all Mexican showdown in the super bantamweight division coming up next. And that is for a vacant title. Forget the crack. Coming up on this, the 10th round scheduled for 12. Do you think if you are Eddie Gonzalez that it's time to start to push the panic button or start to think panic? I don't think you think panic because we, don't, we obviously don't know what the judges are thinking. And this, to me, this isn't a fight where it looks total domination in the eyes for Payano. 
Yes. Um, to me, it looks like I would lean towards Piano, but and Roman hasn't looked as good as we've seen him look in the past. Yes. But I wouldn't push the panic. He does need to pick up the pace. Exactly. But not necessarily push the panic. But no. I mean, he's right here. This is right there was perfect for Roman. But I think it's, he forced Piano to stay in the corner, and he hasn't done that enough. When he's had him on the yeah. ropes or in the corner. He has to be more deliberate and also just start to walk down Payano with his jab. More authoritative is what I would say yep. inside that ring and, and prove his physical dominance over Payano. I think what Roman hasn't been able to do is showcase his youth and try to wear down Payano. And now he's doing that as he pounds away upon Payano. And we saw Payano tie him up. We really haven't seen much of that where Payano's tied up Roman. That shows you that Roman has had success so far in this round. And this is what we're seeing right now in this round is what we, I think you and I both expected to see throughout this entire fight. Forward mental pressure to come forward by Roman and muscle and impose your will upon Payano. Now there is another cut. I don't know if it's the same cut, but there is blood on the face of Juan Carlos Payano. And Roman is coming forward, charging ahead, literally, under a minute left here in the 10th. And Payano's not throwing nearly as much as he was throwing in the previous rounds. That shows Roman is really starting to take his toll on Payano. And I, because his vision's impaired. Payano rushes the blood from his left eye. But this is the Daniel Roman, the confidence that we're starting to see here in the 10th. It's brewing, he's coming forward more. It is smart, calculated aggression, and he's starting to wear down Payano. He's just walking him down. But this is what, we, like we said, we expected to see. And there's been a couple of instances in the corner where Roman has almost kind of cut off the ring and used his shoulder to keep Payano in the corner or along the ropes. And that has really not allowed Payano to come from those different unique angles that he has done throughout this fight. That was a sensational round by Daniel Roman. Stop, please. I need to see your face. Close your eyes, please. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Go. No te desesperes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you were. Don't worry about me. Let's take a look at some of the action from the 10th round. Danny Roman pounding away on the body of Juan Carlos Payano. And this is where he needs to fight more and press Payano against the ropes. Yep, he used his shoulder, kept him in the corner, and was really just to put him, enforce his will on Payano. And we really saw it take a toll. Right there, right hook, kept him in the corner. Payano wasn't really able to explode. Work to the body and that was a fantastic Roman. round from Roman, probably his best round of the fight. Well, if you're Roman, you got to be thinking, all right, let me win these yeah, last two, and, and who knows what can happen, because you don't know what the, the judges are looking for or what they've given edge to, whether it's forward aggression, you don't know what the judges are looking for or what they give an edge to, whether it's forward aggression, whether it's Chris punching. I mean, as you mentioned, we think that Payano is ahead, but at the same time, you don't necessarily know how the judges have it, because it hasn't been a clear cut one way or the other for Payano. We are just using our best judgment. And that's why we're not judging. Right? Yeah, that you I could not have said it better myself. And right now, Roman going back to the game plan of trying to press Payano against the ropes. There, he just pushed him back. And that is what, just that little instance is, instance of pushing him back for that second little flurry that gives you five to ten more seconds where you're the dominant fighter. And also we questioned on whether or not Payana was going to slow down. I'll say this, as we saw in the tenth, for once we're seeing Payano slow down just a hair. That benefits Roman, but I also think Payano's slowing down because of the work rate from Roman. 
Yeah, it's a factor of both. One, he just threw such an, he had such an insane pace through the first half of this fight. And then, obviously, Roman is capitalizing and really has adjusted throughout this fight. Walking Piano down and keeping him in certain positions. There's a straight left to the body by Piano. But back comes Roman. Roman is really showcasing his aggression. A left hook upstairs by the baby-faced assassin. And Payano's being bothered by the blood streaming into his eye. He actually used his glove to brush away the blood. There's a left hook on the top of the head by Roman. Oh, this is getting close, Miguel. If I am just looking at it from the outsider's perspective, I think this one is getting close. That was a good body shot from Roman. There's a right upstairs by Roman. And Roman unloading upon Payano. This has been excellent stuff between two world-class super bantamweights. You're really seeing that kind of a seesaw type battle where Piano came out, you know, guns blazing, and go each other, came out high, and went right behind him, and now you're seeing this starts to teeter in the favor of Roman, who's really walking Piano down now. Thank you, sir. Come the mouthpiece. I need to I need to work on it. No, Thank you. I'll do it. Close your eyes, sir. Please. I'll do it. Oye, está ganando. Acá está el último round. ¿Oíste? Es tu último round. ¿Tú quieres la pelea o no la quieres? Claro. Ok. Todo lo que vas a tirar con la mano de atrás, me tiras como gancho. Gancho a la cabeza o gancho abajo. Ok? Para que no te moleste. Let's take a look at some of the action from... Can you give me that? As we go into the corner, though, with Daniel Roman. Walk along this round, ok? Sí. Alright? Sí. Ok. 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 Twelfth in the final round between the former unified super bantamweight champion Daniel Roman making his PBC debut on the former bantamweight champion now campaigning at 122 Juan Carlos Payano. This round race can very well decide who wins this bout. It has been a tale, of, as you mentioned, ebb and flow action between these two combatants. That's a great snap right hand on Piano right there, knocking it back. What do you have this fight for that? I have I think it is razor close. And, and Roman continues to be aggressive to the body. High drama here at the fight. A left hook to the body by Roman. Can Payano find a way to have a big 12 round? I think he needs it. Both men need this 12th and final round. We'll see how much they have left in the tank. Let go of each other. Let go. Let You're go. starting to see Payano right. throw a little bit more than he was in the last couple of rounds. I think he realizes that this is a close fight and this round could very well determine the winner. Daniel Roman. Let go. Break. He wants to prove that he is still a For Daniel Roman making his BBC debut, make no mistake, Miguel, he wants to show that he is still the cream of the crop here in the Super Bantamweight division. For Juan Carlos Payano, he wants to prove championship gold will once again be mine, but first he has to defeat this man, Daniel Roman. Coming up on 75 seconds remaining on what has been a high-level Ellie matchup. Under a minute left here in the 12th. Get out! 
attacking the bottom. And Roman pounded away upon Juan Carlos Payano. Payano sticks that jab, but Roman got the better of that exchange towards the ropes. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot of movement out of Payano in this round, just trying to circle out the danger. But Roman, again, relentless in his approach so far. This is the Roman we were expecting for the entire fight. Right? Boy, he came on in the second half of the fight, especially. He turned up the heat in the last third, especially. Final moments of this matchup. I think it could go either way. But nonetheless, we retreated to a sensational matchup here in the Super Fanweight Division. Big straight left. And do they count it a knockdown? No, he didn't. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. I'm surprised that punch landed right as the time expired. And I think Payano's glove touched the canvas. In my opinion, that should have been ruled a knockdown. I was going to say, Ray, that to me looked like that shot got in before the bell. You have to call it. If it's thrown before the bell sounds, let's take a look at it again. That was, that was a knockdown. Yeah, that, was that was a knockdown. Yeah, I think that was a split second. That was a knockdown. Oh my goodness. Let's take another look. Right here, I think this was a split. That was a split second before the bell. That's a huge, huge moment, especially if Roman comes out the loser in this one. Or what if it's a draw? Roman, oh my goodness. I'd be upset if I'm Roman. He kind of took that in stride, and I don't think he or his corner, they're just kind of, I don't think they realized how close that was, that that should have been a knockdown. Let's take a look at it one more time, if we can. Here we go again. He literally landed on the butt, yes. He literally hit him on the bell, and it should have been ruled a knockdown. That's interesting to me, Ray. I thought that could prove to be extremely massive in this decision for a fight that is so, so close. What a turn of events, Miguel, here at Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. Oh my goodness, high level drama. And now you wonder what that's going to do to the scorecards. Because it wasn't ruled a knockdown. If it was ruled a knockdown, it would have been a 10-8 round. I think it was a knockdown. Boom, right on the button. And Johnny Callis ruled it, said it was not a knockdown. Payano might have gotten away with one. But it's not his fault, that's the referee's discretion. And again, I'd hate to be in that position, but from our standpoint, and taking a look at the numbers, 261 of 804 for Payano, 152 of 633 for Roman. Yeah, Payano just threw a lot more than Roman in this fight. As we're looking at the numbers, However, Roman was really able to take advantage in the last quarter of that fight and really dominate Payano like we expected him to. I think scores could be all over the place, to be honest with you. Yeah, we could see a draw, we could see a Payano win. Uh, I really wouldn't be shocked by anything. Ladies and Jimmy. gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at the Mohegan Sun Arena, we have a unanimous decision as the judges are in complete agreement. All three judges scored about the same at 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner, the baby-faced assassin, Danny Roman. 116-112.
Well, at least that didn't, that knockdown wasn't the difference, but eight to four in favor of Roman. I thought it was seven five either way. I thought eight to four was a bit generous. Yeah, I did too, Ray, especially for all three judges. I, I don't know if I agree with that decision. I think Payano deserved a little bit more. He fought a fantastic fight against a top contender in Daniel Roman. Roman, obviously, I think that last quarter of the fight was the difference. Maybe some of those toss-up fights in between, or toss-up rounds in between, were given to Roman. Nonetheless, congrats to Danny Roman, who now catapults himself into that number one contender status.